How's it going, guys? Mulligan's here. Um, we're gonna talk about, like, my character yesterday on stream went from level 58 to 85. And the character is going fine. Jumping into Empowered with a limited amount of items. Uh, it's a little bit shaky. It's it's very squishy. My blessings are not doing alright either. I think it's a little bit easier to show from here. I don't have the health from here. Don't have the experience increase from there. I would like to have it. I have a low roll all resistance here. And I don't have either one of the armors from these two. So my blessings are not doing alright. I'm spamming the Black Sun and the Empowered right now. And hopefully what I'm... You know, I, I'm I'm really hoping that I'm gonna like end up finding it, um, the health as soon as possible. A high roll even it rolls all the way up to like 70 or something, so it's going to be very good for my character. I have pretty low HP for my liking. I have pretty low defenses for my liking as well. So the character is doing a little bit shaky simply because I rushed it. Right, I didn't really farm too much, and at level 85, let's talk about the changes that I am doing. Um, I ended up. You know, on my last video before I died, I ended up talking about apostasy and talking about like how I wanted to give it a try. And I did end up trying it that day. It actually feels interesting. Um, I believe it's not good for this character particularly that, that I'm playing. So if I was able to life leech, where in this game you're not only over leeching, but also how life leech works is that like it's not instant. Uh, it is spread into the next three seconds um as a regeneration so you hit the monster and if you're going to be regenerating 40 percent which is a very big number by the way of that hit uh that's 40 percent of that damage is going to be you know leached in the next three seconds evenly uh, i think it's like every second or something so this becomes like an insane regenerating character as you're continuing fighting it, which is very interesting is that like when you are in danger in a game like this, you know, you kind of like step out, you know, you don't really commit, you kind of like jump away, step out. In a case like that, you're also like half HP. So um, the next three seconds, you're still regenerating. It really helps big time. And... On top of that, what I'm getting to is that something like Apostasy, where my dodge is entirely cancelled, I cannot dodge anymore. What this means is that like I'm uh, consistently taking damage. And my character is... I don't have life leech, and I don't have good life regeneration either. So, I do have some stuff that are healing me, but they're bursty, and they're not necessarily... Um, there to like save me from a certain scenario. So, the character f started feeling a little bit more... Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to say, but more susceptible, let's say, in every scenario. Uh, I think on paper, however, it would it should be able to be a little bit tankier if I could find some sort of like a lifesteal. Yeah, I couldn't, and I'm gonna I'm gonna not go for this. That being said, though, I think I still like the Shroud of Dusk. I think so. So my end build is probably going to be again. Oh, one more thing. Um, about apostasy is the fact that like since it cancels dodge. I found out that like it's actually cancelling out your silver shrouds as well. And we have a lot of silver shrouds, like very reliable silver shrouds that we are gaining. Uh, like just one point over here, right? And I'm spamming my Q ability, my net, all the time throughout the entire game. Right there, instantly a silver shroud, you see? Whenever like I use a Q, it just like gives me silver shroud. I think it has like a cooldown when I lose them. It's like two second internal cooldown and then it will give me a new silver shroud again. It's extremely good. Extremely good. So because of this, on top of the reason that I had mentioned about like life regeneration or like life stealing, uh, I'm not going to be taking apostasy. However, I'll still take the Shroud of Dusk. I think it is very good because like the amount of health, the raw health that it gives is unlike anything else. The, the 10 health, I believe, is a very high health number and I really want to gain that. Uh, let's search for health values. So we have another 10 health over here. I've already maxed it out. We have 6 health over there. 6 health over here. Right, this is heal on crits. Uh, this is 5. And that's it. So yeah, 10 health is like one of the higher values. Uh, I suppose it's at the same value with like Wilderness Scout. So that's going to be like the only change right now. Uh, the rest of the you know passives are going to be looking the same. But I want to talk to you about um, some of this stuff. You know, I am Merchant Guild now with this character. I didn't really sell anything yet, and I bought only one item. I actually liked how um, 
Bazaar uh, is built, and I'm going to be talking about that in, in, a, in a future video where I'm just going to talk about like the auction house and how it is built and like maybe how you should be approaching it. But in short, my first thought process was like, okay, I'm going to like introduce such a complicated and advanced loot filter for myself that like, you know, I, I'm going to be able to like see the items on the floor that I that could definitely sell, especially after I touch them with the crafting system in this game. And then while I was actually like brainstorming about the, you know, loot filter um, uh, rules or rule set that I'm going to introduce, I was thinking to myself, do I really want to go through this as in like, you know, not only now I set up a loot filter, but also like when I see rare items on the floor, then I'll need to like decide on every single rare, rare item, how I want to craft it for a certain build, and then I need to also sell them. So my gain would be gold, monetary gain. And merchant guild faster leveling because to to level faster obviously you need to interact with this merchant's guild right right now i'm not interacting so i'm like leveling up slow so those two would be my game but i would obviously be trading a lot of time and maintenance for this so i thought to myself okay never mind seeing rare items i don't want to do this trade uh let's see exalted items so i scrapped the rare items again i'm only looking at the uh exalted items this time on on my last playthrough in COF, Circle of Fortune, I was only looking at almost only just tier 7s. Now I'm obviously looking at tier 6s as well, but uh, certain, yeah, certain mods. Not every mod, definitely not. So for instance, like the potion stuff are closed, dodge stuff are closed. Uh, from like melee, for instance, increased stun chance is closed. Area is closed from the general, I think it's what it is. Damage while channeling stun. Uh, crit chance, this is not the, uh, the the flat one. It is the percentage increase value is closed. So whenever one of these stats are dropping T6, I don't really see the item. If you would like, I can share this with you. Uh, in one of my older videos, I, I said like I would be sharing my loot filters all the time. The problem is... I change all the time on the go, so I don't necessarily know which one to share. So if you would like to have any suggestion about the problem that I just said right now, I would I would be all ears. Because I would like to, my, my loot filters to be um, public all the time in lastepochtools.com. That is what I want. Um, especially when I'm like going through a character. If somebody is out there like trying to mimic or like play the same build, they could definitely like I would like them to be able to use my loot filter. But as I said, like on the go, as I'm decision making about like what I want to search next or like what difficulty I'm jumping into or right, I'm spending too much time with this, like I, I keep on changing it, right? Since like it's so easy to. So I, you know, I don't have a solution with that. Like how I need to, which one should I be putting on last epoch tools? Or maybe I should have like very clear on, um, you know, titles and like names included, yada, yada. So, um... We're going to look into what I bought. This is the only thing that I bought. I'm in hardcore. Uh, so I managed to find a 443. And this is the best one that I found. And this was 300,000 gold. I think it was actually 350k uh, gold. Which is... Can be considered quite high. I think if you're in softcore, you could probably buy something like this for free even. But in hardcore, it was that, and I think it was worth it, to be honest with you, looking at the other competition, and, and, and uh, I didn't really need an LP. And let me tell you, if there's anybody else that is, like, playing this character, I played up until, like, level 70-something without this bow, um, the damage difference is out of this world, okay? 100%, because I think the pet is gaining from the increased bow damage quite a bit, and the pet is gaining... Obviously, like our three main abilities are gaining, uh, you know, the uh, the pluses all up, all all the way to plus four, uh, if you can find. And at the same time, when you critically strike an enemy, your falcon gains melee damage. And we are constantly critting an enemy with nets all the time because of the caltrops, and the caltrops have uh, increased crit rate, as you know, because of their slow chance, right? So every ten percent is one crit chance for a caltrop. And um, we have 200% slow chance on a Caltrop. So that's, yeah, that's a lot of crit rate. It will just crit left and right. And that means that, like, the pet is gaining a constant 25 value. Another thing that I'm going to... So this was the only item that I bought. I'm going to show you two items that I haven't 
uh, talks about yet on my other uh, videos so far about Falconer, my Falconer. One of them is going to be this guy. Uh, I, I just want you to check the base. The base is saying 23, it could be 24 by the way, all the way up to 24 Falconry Helm uh melee damage to your falcon this is a must to run and i didn't cover this before uh if you're playing this character you should go for this helm how do you search for this helm you know, it doesn't need to be strong all you need to do is like some dexterity on it uh maybe some vitality on it or you could put falconry on it even if you do not listen to this even if you do not have many falconry affixes you put only one of them because this will give you plus one to falconry and then you level up the other stuff. Uh, and while leveling up the other stuff, sometimes your level up will crit and give you a falconry plus as well. So even if you are like making a shitty helm like I do right now, which is a shitty helm, that's what it is. Uh, just put like one level of falconry and it's going to be a big boost uh, while you're searching for like that, you know, bigger upgrade. And how to include this is um, how you search for this helm is you come to add rule. You can recolor it, you can make it pink if you like, and you can go to item type, uh, armor, helmet. From here you go to rogue of course, and you select the falconry helm, <clears throat> this guy. It says minimum level 68, so you need to be killing minimum level 68 monsters, um, which starts from the Lagon timeline right over here. The ending storm is going to be level 75 in normal. So those monsters are going to be able to start dropping you falconry helm. And it is a must to get. Now, talking about a must to get, I have news for you. They, like, this is an absolutely ridiculous role. Uh, Advent of the Erase. This is a, you know, we was will item. It was, I want to say it was an 18 we was will. We can calculate that. 5, 9, 16, 18. Yeah, I was right. It's 18 Weaver's Will. Uh, and it's ended up rolling T7 movement speed. Unfortunately, the item itself has low movement speed. And the implicit is the lowest roll as well. But it still ends up, you know, uh, calculating like 41% movement speed or something on the boots. And well, I am getting to a point where like I really started enjoying the movement speed with my character, where, where agility is going to be very important as well. This is global damage increase, so it should be reflecting to our pet as well. I'm going to be putting four more points into this. What this node does is that, like, it gives you one-to-one, -one, basically. Your movement speed becomes your damage, kind of. It gives you better haste rating as well. So, right now, without anything, without combat, we have 55, right? If I had, like, five points onto this, it would be 55% more damage for me. Uh, obviously, uh not multiplicative but i have been paying attention it goes all the way up to like 101 right now with this character uh without the haste shrine with the haste shrine it goes about like 134 or something uh which is absolutely insane absolutely insane so back to this boots okay these these boots are absolutely insane and i'll talk to you why these boots are capable of giving you haste more consistently but I thought that was only it. That's not only it. Uh, when you gain haste from any uh, source in this character, and we have a lot of sources to gain haste uh, with this character. Whenever we gain haste, we gain ward. So we, we have this like awkward ward, um, about like 200, 300 wards, so like an extra layer of defense. But on top of this, the biggest line is right over here. It says your minion gains haste and friendly frenzy for three seconds. Frenzy is in fact attack speed. I think it's like 20% attack speed or something stupid. It is. It is 20% attack speed. So this thing became absolutely insane for my pet, for my falcon. You must run this, guys, these boots. Uh, it's, they are incredible. They are, they are very, very big. Uh, so this is like a must to have right now. And, you know, in, in my old streams, there was a point where I was like trying to figure out how can I gain more attack speed to my pets? And, well, there you have it. These, boat, these boots even is the answer. Apart from those three items, I don't really have anything that is like um, exceptional. Maybe the, this ring isn't too bad, to be honest with you, compared to like rest of my items. I have one thing that is like bothering me right now. I want to know if physical damage 
is exactly the same value as minion damage for me that is that is the question that i want answered and i don't really know uh how to how to answer that question yeah i'm not really sure as you can see the scaling tags of my falconry is minion companion dex dexterity and then afterwards it says minion tags is physical and melee so this leads me to believe that physical damage unfortunately doesn't scale my falcon i need to find minion physical damage you understand so in that case also minion damage is what i should well minion damage and dexterity should probably be what i should be focusing on um but yeah, more over this in the next video. I think um, just to cut it from here, uh, what I want to say is that like I'm very, very uh, susceptible to death right now. Like I'm not tanky, 20% armor, bad resistance is kind of like bad is in like I cannot run mark for death and I cannot swap items as I want them to because like every single idol is like necessary to keep these uh, resistances and my I, I don't like my health, it's low. And where we are trying to like find some you know empowered stuff so i'll be on the stream i'll try to like grind away and i will try to get to like level 96 or something today and i really hope i can without dying and i really hope i'll be able to find some like upgrades which is going to be very big later today the first thing that i'll try and farm is going to be probably an lp woven flesh i want to have a legendary woven flesh as my chest hopefully an lp2 but you know if it comes to it it's gonna be lp1 so be it i don't mind in this video sincerely apologizing i don't have any gameplay just wanted to talk over my thing one more thing i i learned one more thing i'm gonna say that too and i'm gonna close it um there is this question in my mind when you're making a legendary item you put a unique to the left you put an exalted to the right right and then it becomes a legendary right simple but i was wondering if you put a unique that you can use to the left side and then on the right side you put an item that you cannot use because it has circle of fortune rank six for instance okay cof six on the right and now i am merchant skilled right so cof six to the right and a unique that i can use to the left and i make them a legendary the legendary requires cof as well so, that being said, the items that I collected in COF, uh, they cannot be food for my legendaries right now. So, I'm in not the best shape when it comes to utilizing my stash. I'm going to need to find new um, food for the, for the legendaries that I want to make as well. Peace out, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be on the stream. I will see you there.